Hello, welcome back to the first video in, I think, 12 days. It's been almost two weeks since I've uploaded a video, and it's been about a full month since my last two. I've uploaded two videos in the last month and a quarter. I remember when, like there was a time I used to, I uploaded uh, four videos in one day, but now I'm here uploading one every couple weeks. But I want to change that, and I think I have a good series here where um, it's going to be called Who Will Be Better? It is 100% predictions, um, absolutely no statistics behind it, just pure emotions. And I'm going to start it off today with the 2020 quarterback class um, in the NFL. And uh, this video idea has been in my head for less than a day now. And um, I'm excited to see how this goes. I, for this video, I have taken eight quarterbacks that, um, that are, the I think, typically viewed as the better ones. And um, that would be Joe Burrow. Picked first, Tua Tungavailoa fifth, um, Herbert tenth, Justin Herbert tenth, Jordan Love uh, towards the end of the first, Jalen Hurts in the second, Jacob Eason in the third, Jake Fromm in the fourth, I believe, and Ben DiNucci also in the fourth, if I'm not mistaken, might have been the seventh. Is one of those two. But anyway, so the, I have broken this down into different categories. Um, I have who's the best right now. Um, then who will get the most MVPs in their career, who will go to the most Pro Bowls, um, who will get the most Offensive Player of the Years, um, who will have the highest jersey sales, who will have the most rings, and who will be deemed um, the best at the end of their careers. Now this video is very heavily influenced by one of my favorite videos of all time. Um, it's when Brian Scalabrini and uh, Kendrick Perkins um, on the ESPN YouTube channel um, had a were given a, a board, and it said in five years who will have the most MVPs, All Stars, Defensive First Teams, Jersey Sales, and Rings. So I've just expanded it a bit bigger and moved it to football, where I then specified it a bit more. Um, so yeah, so let's get right into this. Who do I think is the best quarterback right now? Um, in eighth place, I have Ben DiNucci. Um, he made his first start with the Cowboys tonight, but I do believe the Cowboys would prefer the other seven quarterbacks on this list over him. At, excuse me, at seventh, I have Jacob Eason. He was taken above Jake Fromm, but I do believe Fromm is the better quarterback, whereas Eason, it's very close. These two go back and forth throughout this. These three, in fact, go back and forth throughout the rankings. Um, but I do have Eason slightly worse and Jake Fromm coming in at number six at um, yeah, slightly better than Jacob Eason. At number five, I have Jordan Love. Um, something that's turned me off of Jordan Love, I was high on him throughout the draft, mainly because I'm high on anyone that comes from the Mountain West Conference. But um, I, the one reason why I'm not so high on Jordan Love anymore is he's not even in at the end of games of blowout games. He's not in those games taking the knee. Um, that goes to Matt Barkley, I think, is the quarterback who's taking those. Um, unless I'm just not smart. Um, so I have Jordan Love at fifth. Uh, at fourth, I have Jalen Hurts, who has been playing. Um, and if the, um, if the Eagles continue on this downward trajectory, could see some solid quality playing time before Jordan Love. Um, so that's why Jordan Love is at five and Jalen Hurts at four. At third, I think Tua Tungavailoa is the third best quarterback in this draft class. Um, he is much closer to Joe Burrow than he is to Jalen Hurts. And um, so, yeah, so there's, there's typically three different tiers in this vi in these lists. Um, you have the top three, Burrow, Herbert, and Tungavailoa. Then you have the middle two, Hurts and Love. And then you have the bottom three from Eason and Danucci. So that's, there's typically fairly decent sized gaps between each tier. But yeah, so 
the bottom of the top tier. I have Tua Tagovailoa. He just hasn't shown me enough yet. Um, he didn't start right away, as Joe Burrow did, and Herbert started much sooner. And then in his first game against the Rams, wasn't great. Did get the win. Well done through his first career touchdown pass. Um, but I, I wanted a bit more. Granted, it was against the Rams, who have a very great defense. And I'm starting to think that the Dolphins are turning into contenders, at least to win one playoff game. They There's a chance they'll, I think right now, um, let me pull it up real quick. But I do believe that, um, okay, no, they're, they're two games back. I thought they were only one game back of the Bills. They are two games back of the Bills to get in to uh, clinch the AFC East and um, and are only uh, and are only one game back of making it into the playoffs. So if I would not be surprised if we do see the Miami Dolphins in the playoffs either this year, this year I would not be surprised if we saw the Miami Dolphins and I would definitely not be surprised next year if they make the playoffs uh, led by Tua. Tua. He will need to have consistent play, but um, it is very feasible that Tua and the Dolphins make the playoffs in the next two years. Um, second, Justin Herbert. He's played out of his mind The um, these last, since he started, but um, I just... It's very, it's very close. I would not get mad at you if you put Herbert ahead of Burrow. I just I can't deny the stats that Joe Burrow has been putting up. The interceptions for Joe Burrow have been a bit too high, but he's tie, he's third in the league in passing yards as a rookie. Just insane. And Joe Burrow, I think right now, uh, is the best quarterback from this draft class. So now. Who do I think will win the most MVPs in their career? Um, at number eight, Jake Fromm. I, Jake Fromm will tend to be at the bottom of most of these lists. Uh, it's not his fault, really. Um, it's the Bills' fault and Josh Allen's fault. Because there's Josh Allen is also such a young quarterback, um, it would take an injury or a contract dispute or something that gives Fromm an opportunity and I just don't see it happening and he's at number eight on this list. Um, number seven, Jacob Eason. Um, he ranks slightly higher because his quarterback ahead of him is Philip Rivers, an older quarterback who will retire fairly soon, giving Eason the reins. Um, that's why Eason is above, above Fromm and very well could could argue to put him ahead of Ben DiNucci, who I have at sixth, um, just because he's gotten playing time this season, and hasn't his first game was not bad. He played about dead even with um, with Carson Wentz, minus the two touchdowns. Granted, um, Wentz did have two interceptions and um, DiNucci did not, but the two touchdowns would have been a nice addition and probably would have help the Cowboys win the game, but that's in the past now. And so Ben DiNucci falls at sixth. I think if he continues to play decently, and if he burst, as he, I think he, uh, Chris Collinsworth and Phil Simms, uh, not, sorry, um, Chris Collinsworth, was Chris Collinsworth and um, Al Michaels um, even said that um, he's grown so much in that game. And if he continues to grow with this receiving court, anything's possible. Thank you, KG. Um, anything's possible for Ben DiNucci. At number five, I have Jalen Hurts. And um, it's a similar reason for Jake Fromm. But, um, uh, uh, sorry, Hurts is behind a younger quarterback who's played decently. His play has definitely declined since his MVP caliber season. But, um... Hertz is still getting playing time, and I think if he, the way for him to get an MVP, it's possible. Hertz can win an MVP. What it would take is for him to take over the starting role, obviously, and the Eagles to just that offense just to explode that same season where um, Hertz is named the starter. If they just explode, Hertz can win an MVP.
Um, number four, Jordan Love. I think by the end of the career where Jordan Love is the starter instead of Aaron Rodgers, there's a good chance he can win an MVP. Um, he will have to rely a lot on Devontae Adams, which if he can win an MVP Devon, behind Devontae Adams, that would in, in, well, in Green Bay, he is an absolute star because that's what Aaron Rodgers had to do, and Aaron Rodgers is one of the best players ever. So um, for Jordan Love to be able to do that would be amazing, and it would come at the end of his career. So hopefully then the Packers would be able to draft better. But, um, but yeah, Jordan Love falls at four ahead of Jalen Hurts. So then out of the top three quarterbacks, I think Justin Herbert has the um, the smallest chance of winning an MVP because he plays in L.A., and what I've seen from L.A. is very inconsistent, and they're more focused on the defensive side of the ball. From what I can see, um, they're more focused with Joey Bosa, Melvin Ingram, where they're okay with letting players like Melvin Gordon go, Melvin Gordon, Philip Rivers go. So the consistency on defense and more inconsistencies on offense lead to Herbert falling to third in these rankings. I still think he can. Like He could win an MVP or two um, in his career. But um, I would I would put money on the other two above him, above him. Um, at number two, I have Joe Burrow, and that's because he plays in Cincinnati, um, and the hype around him was will never get to the amount it was with Tua. I he had an amazing senior season, what the best ever. I I would I will say that was the best college season ever, but still the hype that Tua had as a freshman, a sophomore, and going into his junior year was insane. And that has followed him to Miami. His story is absolutely amazing. And um, I think Joe Burrow ha probably has the best offense out of the top three with um, A.J. Green, um, Tyler Boyd, John Ross. Even though John Ross does want, um, does has requested a trade. Um, Joe Burrow has been amazing. And... Um, I just don't see the Bengals winning too much, too uh, enough games to get him the MVP. Whereas in Tua's very first start, they won. Like Tua's first start was a game against a good team. It was a game against a very good team, and they won. So that bodes well for Tua, and I think Tua will end up two, maybe even three MVPs in his career. So now most Pro Bowls. This one was tough because, um, well, between the top three, between the bottom five, it wasn't really too close, it wasn't too hard, but um, the top three is more difficult. At number eight, I have Jake Fromm. Again, he's not going to get the opportunity that um, these other seven get. Even Danucci has already received more opportunities than Jake Fromm has. Um, so at number seven, Ben Danucci. Um, once Dak comes back, his career is, as a starter, is probably over. It will probably be a career backup after that. Which is sad. He showed some promise. So maybe, um, maybe like a Tyrod Taylor. See, so yeah, a, 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 a very solid career backup who can be a starter. But, um, my guess for from Danucci, no Pro Bowls. For, this is where Jacob Eason moves up a tier. Um, I think there's a chance Eason can make a Pro Bowl. After Philip Rivers retires, Eason takes over the reins, and one good year, there is a Pro Bowl. So that's why Eason is at six. But it is not as promising as Jalen Hurts, who falls in at number five. He's already being incorporated and can be inco incorporated in uh, many different ways as a running back, as a passer. I would like to see him grow as a passer. Um, but I wouldn't also be surprised if Jalen Hurts leaves in free agency when he can because this is Carson Wentz's team. But if he does, if he is named the starter in Philly, I do think, again, one good year. Um, there's a Pro Bowl, even a decent year for Jalen Hurts. And I think he can be selected to a Pro Bowl. Um, Jordan Love, it's a very similar story with Jacob Eason. As soon as Aaron Rodgers is gone, he has the reins to a, a very decent offense um, coached by LaFleur. 
uh, very likely that Jordan Love will make a Pro Bowl in his career. So now at the top three, um, very difficult, very, very, very difficult. Um, at number three, I have Tua, just because I think he's right now the worst of the three. Still an amazing player. And I wouldn't be surprised if these three tied in Pro Bowls. But um, I think Tua will make like one or two less. At number two, I have Justin Herbert, who has had an amazing year this year. Amazing year. But um, just not quite as good as Joe Burrow. And I think there's a chance. There is some chance in this crazy 2020 world that Joe Burrow makes the Pro Bowl as a rookie. There's a chance. I mean, if we go and look at the stats here, I mean, I've, as I've already said, he's, um, he's third in passing yards, only behind Patrick Mahomes, who comes in at number two. He's only 40 yards behind Mahomes and about um, 200 yards behind Matt Ryan, who both have insane passing games um, and insane passing offenses. As Patrick Mahomes who the, had the 50 touchdown year, and Matt Ryan has had an MVP caliber season. I think like, if you go and look at Joe Burrow's stats compared to other quarterbacks, like his, as I mentioned, yards, he's third. Um, completion percentage isn't great, but, um, where is he? He fa he falls at 14th. So above average, not as good as Herbert. Herbert actually has a better, um, better percentage, but yards per game. Um, shoot, where I just lost him. Herbert again does beat him here, but do, I think he hasn't, he just doesn't have the, um, it's not by much, first of all. It's about 20 yards, 20 yards per game. So eventually, at this rate, Herbert might actually catch up to Burrow. I Actually, that's no, probably not going to happen. But, um, but yeah, Burrow has um, 284 passing yards a game, which is above Aaron Rodgers, Brady, Josh Allen, um, Jared Goff, Kyler Murray. Um, yeah, his touchdowns, not great he does not have the most touchdowns or as many like herbert has more touchdowns than he does which really isn't good especially considering that um burrow has more weapons but he does burrow does also have a better rushing attack with um with joe mixon so the 11 touchdowns isn't horrible it is ahead of philip rivers um ahead of dak who only played five games but ahead of Garoppolo, Daniel Jones. And then his interceptions is actually pretty good. Um, it's not as great as people who haven't played, as I'm, I'm currently looking at the stats now. But um, let me just try and... Let me try and find this different one. He has five interceptions, which is the same amount as um, Josh Allen. Um, one less, One more than Matt Ryan. One less than Russell Wilson and Goff and Bridgewater. So very great stats. And the fact that he has um, 2,300 yards passing already, I think there's a chance Joe Burrow makes the Pro Bowl his um, rookie year. So now most offensive player of the years. This one, I tried to differ from MVP as much as I could. But um, from... Jake Fromm still at the bottom. Um, Jacob Eason still at seven. Ben Nucci at six. Um, Jalen Hurts at five. Jordan Love at four. But then I think Joe Burrow will get will uh, finish third in most offensive player of the years. In fact, he also might not get any uh, just due to how the offensive player of the year award is structured. But um, I have Tua at second. Uh, and then Justin Herbert at third at first, just because of how electrifying he is. As I, I mentioned some of the stats just a second ago, he has more passing yards per game. He has more touchdowns. His game is electrifying. 
So I think that could lead to more offensive player of the years, even if it is just one that could be enough to um, to push him over the top from this draft class. So now jersey sales. Who do I think will sell the most jerseys? Um, at the bottom of the list, Jake Fromm, just because he won't get enough playing time to sell jerseys. Uh, I'm... I like Jake Fromm. I like it. Well, I like his Jake Fromm's playing style. I like his game, but um, very tough situation. Like if he was in Dallas, this would be a lot different. Um, seventh, I have Jacob Eason. Um, he will start to sell jerseys once he starts, but that'll be another two years, well, a year or two or so. And in that time, I think Ben DiNucci will sell more jerseys. From just this year, as he's gonna, I see no reason for McCarthy to start Dalton anymore. Um, so yeah, I think Danucci will sell more jerseys this year, and then um, when Dak comes back, they'll still be like Danucci is gonna become the new Trace McSorley, or whatever um, in the NFL quarterback team before McSorley. We yeah, have Ben Danucci might actually will probably actually sell more jerseys than Easton and Fromm. At number five, I have Jordan Love because um, because he's not going to play for a while. Aaron Rodgers is going to play for, I would say, at least four more years in Green Bay, hopefully, unless the Packers are absolute idiots and move on from him, which they could be. I mean, they drafted Jordan Love. They drafted A.J. Dillon. Like, they're two spots they were actually good at. But, um... But yeah, I think Jordan Love will sell more, might sell more jerseys than Danucci, Eason, and Fromm combined. But um, it not quite as much as Jalen Hurts. It will be very close, but I think Jalen Hurts will sell slightly more jerseys than Jordan Love. Then finally, into the top three, um, I think Joe Burrow falls third, just because he's been overshadowed, undeservingly, un overshadowed by these other two. But um, I think his jersey sales might amass the bottom, the bottom five combined. I, in fact, I'm fairly confident they will. But um, but yeah, Joe Burrow falls in at number three. Then at number two, Justin Herbert, who has I mentioned the most electrifying of the playing style of these three, and. He only falls to Tua because of the hype that Tua has. He played any place for Miami, which surprisingly are like thought of better than um, Los Angeles, which the record shows. The Dolphins are four and three, Chargers at two and five. The Chargers really need to win a game, but um, but yeah, the, uh, there's more hype. There's more of a fan base around Miami and Tua than Herbert, and I think Tua will sell more jerseys now we're on to the two most important parts the rings and how they will be viewed at the end of their career so with the rings i could have taken this two different ways i could have said rings in general which would have changed this a little bit or i could have said like led their team to rings um, and I've gone more for the led their team to rings, but I can give a quick, a quick, brief um, total rings. Um, Jake Fromm will be higher on will be higher on this list because there's a chance the Bills could get a ring this year. Uh, Jordan Love might be number one because the Packers could win a ring this year and the next four or five years to come. Um, ben DiNucci would be eighth. Jalen Hurts seventh. Eason would be about sixth, and then Jake Fromm, Jordan Love, and then the top three. But um, but yeah, instead I went for the leading their team to rings, and um, number eight was Jake Fromm. He's not gonna lead his team to a, a ring. He's just not. Jo Josh Allen's gonna be there for a long time, and Jake Fromm's just not gonna get the opportunity. At seven, Ben DiNucci. His only shot is if he starts putting up massive Patrick Mahomes numbers, and 
makes it so Dak is no longer on the team, and it's been Danucci's team now, and then they build from there. That's his only shot. Um, Jacob Eason, um, if the Colts can build a team around him once Phillip Rivers retires, then he can fairly easily win a ring. Same thing with Jalen Hurts, who comes in at number five. If um, the Eagles start to go back to their 13-3 and day, or 13-3 year, then... Um, and I think Jalen Hurts can play a huge part in that. Especially, I think, honestly, I, this would be a fun video make up, make up, make, but, um, I wouldn't, if I'm Doug Peterson and whoever's in charge of the Eagles, give me one more year of Wentz and then let's start Jalen Hurts. And, because, I mean, you can get a lot, a great, I think a pretty good trade for uh, Carson Wentz. But anyway, this video is already pretty long, so I'll try and speed this up. Jordan Love at four. Um, Aaron, once Aaron Rodgers retires, the Packers will probably still be good. If Jordan Love is as good as promised, um, he will more than likely um, compete for a ring. At number three, I have Joe Burrow because the team around him isn't built together well. The defense just isn't there. The offense is great. He has three good wide receivers, a, a, running back, a good running back or two. Offense is there. Defense just isn't quite there, especially compared to these other two. Um, number two, I have Tua. His team's been the best this year. Um, they've been pretty dang good. And I think there's a chance that Tua competes for a ring in two to three years. Uh, but number one, I have Justin Herbert because his team is the most well-rounded. His offensive weapons aren't great. He's lost Austin Eckler. Uh, Keenan Allen is a is gr good receiver. But not as um, I would. He's not the best receiver. Um, Mike Williams, not a great number two receiver. I think Joe Burrow has a better receiving core than Justin Herbert has. But um, Justin Herbert has a more well, well well rounded team, especially on defense, than these other two. And I think there's a good chance that um, that the Chargers will win win more rings than the Dolphins and Bengals, or than Tua and Joe Burrow, because there is no promise that they'll finish on um on their teams they are now and finally to the end of the career i have jake from and dead last because he's just not going to get playing time uh seven benjanucci after this he's not going to get playing time at number six i have jalen hurts who more than likely won't get the playing time that he needs to compete with these other quarterbacks um and this is the lowest he has has been ranked but um yeah he will have a solid career but not as good as Jacob Eason at number five, who will get the um, will get the ropes handed to him after Phil Rivers retires. He will have a very solid career um, behind Frank Reich and this offense. Then at number four, Jordan Love. If everything projects right, once Rodgers retires, Love should be pretty dang good and finish above Eason and Hurts in the um, in the goat category of this. Then finally, um, the moment um, you've probably been waiting for it if you know that, what I'm talking about. Mom, if you don't know, you've been, I don't know why you've been watching for this long. It's quite a while. But um, at number three, I have Tua Tungvaluwa because he won't, I just don't think he will get the rings. He won't have the yards that Burrow and Herbert have. And it'll be very, very close. But I think Tua on an all-time rank will rank lower than Burrow and Herbert. Um, which means at least one team messed up with their picks, but I would say, I would dare say two teams messed up with their picks as I have uh, Joe Burrow finishing second, um, in the GOAT list and Justin Herbert, um, finishing at the greatest of all time from this draft class. Um, Burrow has the weapons now, but I think over time, Justin Herbert will develop better and um, we'll put up better better years than Joe Burrow has. But um, thank you all very much for watching. I know this is a long video. I'm sorry. But um, thank you all very much for watching. Please leave a comment. Subscribe. Um, I might make a part two to this where I look at the running backs from this year's draft class. If there's um, any group of players you want me to look at and make a video on this, I absolutely will. I've really enjoyed this. And again, thank you all very much for watching. Adios.